how yeah. I believed in me when, frankly, no one did. When mm -hmm. no one did. Mm -hmm. When people thought I was a loon for not accepting positions at top universities uh, to go to medical school. Yeah. When it was, I mean, what is that? I'm, I'm, I'm studying neuroscience in skirt. <laughs> I'm going to be in South Carolina yeah. filming a guy all the time. <laughs> My parents thought, you know, a lot of different things. I'll tell you that that much. I thought it was very weird, very strange. I can tell you that that much. And Tyler believed in me for the first time. And having that belief and having that chance to really go at it and really work and really build my skills and my talents, that's the change, that's the life change that I needed, that I absolutely mm -hmm. needed. There were a bunch of really, really funny times and a bunch of great memories because we were on, on the road so much and just there's a special bond that happens when you've got men on the road. I think it's actually a very tribal thing. I think it's like an evolutionary thing that we will develop those bonds and develop those stories. And so a lot of the fun would happen in between things when we were either eating and just talking about life or we would talk about all the weird sorts of situations that would happen and all the stories that would uh, get us from one place to the next. Because for us, it felt like this constant journey upwards. Like Tyler was build building his name and he was, I mean, he, we had to go through so much different adversity, things like losing his Facebook and things like that. <laughs> so one funny thing was uh, just, Tyler's absolute hatred for my diet, uh, which was absolutely hilarious because I would eat like crap around Tyler. Like he would be on a, like a three day fast yeah. and not have eaten any food whatsoever. And I'd be like, Tyler, wait, go get a, a Little Caesars pizza. And I would eat the entire pizza right in front of him. Yeah. And he'd just be dying because of that. And he would just be like, how in the world is this guy eating this? The first time that he borrowed my skateboard, was the time that he like fell off the whole thing and just I think he like sprained his ankle. Like he had a oh bad ankle goodness. for a couple months. He he was on crutches. He had like this thing on his leg. Like he couldn't run for for a while. And oh I feel I feel I feel bad that for that. Is me. that I'm, is a very tiring thing. To I'm sorry I broke your husband. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> funny. But I don't know. Like lately, I've been uh, getting more into like the whole idea of why I'm here with Tyler. Like I've always wanted to do documentaries and it just so happened to be that they're taking me to Nicaragua uh, to do the trip um, to feed the kids and all these things. And oh, that's get, so like, exciting. A documentary style. So this is like my first attempt uh, to do a documentary all along. I've realized how the whole videography thing was never mine. It was never about me. It's about other people. And if you think about the idea of documenting a story that really tells, it, it, it shows like how kids and families gather up in dumpsters to pick up their daily meal, you know? And to document that and document what Consolidated is doing by, you know, donating and helping out and, you know, giving them food and stuff like that. How I'll be able to document that put that documentary, put that message out there. And that one link that people can go to, to donate, you know, that makes a big difference. Like that itself is making an impact in the world. It's making an impact in those kids and how that whole idea, that whole process is bigger than me, but it was only through my work that other people came across that video that now enables them to contribute to do good uh, to the world. And now I am a part of something that's bigger than myself um, and something that's ultimately, um, you know, the backbone of it is, is, is just pure love and, and the intention is ultimately what counts as well, uh, which for me, the intention would be to just put a message out there that is good to the world and that does good to the world that's really awesome. That's really awesome. And it's amazing to see your growth over time uh, <laughs> compared to like when I first met you versus now and you pushing yourself outwards to grow out there and start talking. 
more and, 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 and seeing the bigger picture for what you want to do and what your work could do for other people besides just like, let me make these cool videos with these cool visuals, but like, exactly. let me make these videos that end up helping people, you know, mm -hmm. using your, like, that's the ultimate job of an artist that it helps people feel more alive by any means possible. So in this case, you have people feel more alive in their mind, their body, their relationships and their business, mm -hmm. but also help these people over in Nicaragua, you know, these children even feel more alive literally because you're living, giving them what gives them sustenance and also, you know, feel more alive because they're watching amazing content and amazing documentary that is absolutely beautiful. And I know you're going to make it absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Hopefully, so, yes. <laughs> that's, I'm hoping. Oh, no, I, I, you, you, you're, you're, um, you're humble, but I know you're going to do it. <laughs> I know you're going to do it. Yeah. And the first biggest lesson that I learned was the importance of having direct experience. Having direct experience of what it is like to be working those long nights, what it is like to be on the road for so long. The second biggest thing that I learned was the importance of creating the right culture in business. I absolutely believe that if you nail the culture, you will nail the business. If you nail the culture, both inwards within whatever company you're creating, or for all of the marketing and the advertising and all of the stuff that you're going, that's going out there public facing, you must have complete awareness of the culture you're working with. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah, man. I take it uh, all the way back to like literally the first time that he decided to go live and like document the whole thing. Cause that yeah. escalated to like hiring you and then hiring me and then mm -hmm. hiring whoever he's going to hire like years, years and years down mm -hmm. the road and how like that first step created a snowball effect to what he has today. I've only had probably, I mean, really two times in my life where I've felt like I have audibly heard God speak to me. And, and this may sound crazy to some people, but one of those times was when I was in the gym on a treadmill uh, in Georgia. And I just had this like audible, just like, you know, word from God that I needed to start, start telling my story. And I needed to start documenting it. And I've got a video on my phone that I've played a couple of times, like some Throwback Thursday type type footage of leaving the gym and I walked out and I got in my car and hit record and just started talking. Now over the last two years, I have made the transition. I've gone from being unemployed, you know, to 450,000 in income. And, and I was heads down and focused in building that business and, and didn't document any of that uh, on social media. And so now moving forward, I can, I can you know, go from being heads down to lift my head up and I can say, okay, I've done something here. I, I'm not Gary Vaynerchuk sitting here saying, look, I've built these businesses to this many hundreds of millions and $60 million here and I built this and I invested in Uber and Facebook and all this. You know, I'm not, I'm not standing over there saying that and preaching that narrative because again, it's, it's difficult to relate to, but I'm, I'm at that 450 mark now. And so what, what I know that I can do or what I believe that I can do is that I can put out content valuable content that people will be able to actually use, but I can put it out in a way that is relatable to that 50, that 75 to $250,000 income range because I just, just went through there. I just came on the other side of that. I've just, just surpassed that and the majority of my daily activities and the majority of the way I think and act are, are still what I was doing in that in, in that time frame. Tyler gave me an opportunity and I took that opportunity and I ran with that shit. Mm -hmm. and, and you too. And, and now what's going to happen? Yeah. Death proof is going to affect millions of people. Millions. Yeah. Millions. You are going to affect millions of people. Tyler is going to affect millions of people. Joseph, millions of people. And, and all the people who end up working with us you know, mm -hmm. imagine the person that you're going to have an influence on, Pablo. Yeah. Imagine the person, you're going to give some kid who was like you. You're going to eventually get to a point where you're going to give some kid who was like you that opportunity. What's he going to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just incredible. It's a beautiful thing to see.